Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the to this new history podcast we're doing called How We Got Here, The Story of Mankind. The Story of Mankind. Where we'll be uh, going off the cuff over whatever historical event we want to cover in time. I just thought the first series, well, not series, the first episode, episode. should be about how humanity even became humanity in the first place. Which is fair. I believe this is fair. Uh, my name is Professor Dova. I'm here with my with my colleague. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Professor Sieg. Or Siegward. That's as they call me. He's not a professor. He's my little uh, butt boy. But don't worry about that. Um, I... Fake news. <laughs> but any anyway, um, we are going any to be... Any We This is going to be all off the cuff. This is going to be unedited for the most part. Yes, obviously. So, and it's just going to sound like a conversation between two guys, two random guys you don't know and you don't really care about. But hopefully this will be entertaining in some way, shape, or form. Obviously there are a lot of history podcasts out there. There are a lot of paleontology podcasts podcasts out there uh none of us are experts um we don't have sources but that well we don't have sources that are like this is just going over general knowledge that i yeah. know off the cuff uh he's more of a paleontologist expert i don't know much about this topic but i find it fascinating Yes. So, with that being said, let us begin. The furthest we can trace back our split from our most... The, the cousin that's most like us, chimpanzees. Uh, the first ancestry we've ever had dates back to about 7.2 million years ago. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Tumai. Tumai is an ape-like creature uh, that we know for a fact stood upright. Because, we, we know it stood upright, because where the spine connects to the back of the skull is very much similar to how a human spine connects to the back of the skull. If you look at this image here, this di diagram here, you can see that a chimpanzee's skull uh, skull connection to the spine is further back. It's so far back. Then, it wouldn't go ahead. It wouldn't balance. It wouldn't balance on the standing up. It's because it's so hunched over, and it balances by... They, they knuckle walk. That they knuckle walk, yeah. As you can see with modern humans, it is closer to the to the jawline where the skull connects. And as you can see with Sahelanthropus, it is more towards the middle, not quite not quite Almost as there. it is in modern humans, but still further up than a chimpanzee. So we are, we are fairly certain this this species. Uh, was at least semi bipedal some of the time. Uh, it would have spent m most of its time in trees, because at the time Africa was still very much dominated by jungle. Although it was beginning to be more woodland than jungle. Parts of it. Parts of it. Uh, they would have mostly eaten nuts, plants, small bugs, things like. Things that most a chimpanzee would eat. These yeah. th these things would have, if you would have seen this thing and a chimpanzee, you wouldn't have be a, be able to tell the difference, except that this one would stand on two legs sometimes. And uh, chimps, when they stand up on two legs, they're so uncomfortable. They look, yeah. they look way too unbalanced. Well, also their hips. Their hips aren't right. And of course, here we have a uh, model renditioning of what they might have looked like. 
of course, this is all speculation. We'll never know what they truly looked like. But based on these and chimpanzee reflections, we can get a somewhat of an idea of what they might have looked like. Yeah. You know, they would have they would have yeah. still had very pronounced jaws, very small noses, very heavy brow ridges. Yeah. But as we said, to my to my is a fascinating little uh fossil. It was found in the Sahel region of Chad. Uh <laughs> Chad. I know, it's that it's wonderful, right? And um, I love the skull. The skull is my favorite. That we have of Tumai. Is that all we have? Uh, for the most part. I believe they found a few finger bones as well. Uh, I don't think we have the other half the jaw, but we do have a mostly intact skull. That skull is gorgeous. I adore it. It's my favorite. <laughs> it, it is wonderful. Um, so, moving on from the, our very earliest ancestor... We have Auroran Tuganensis, which we know very little about. We know nothing. We know basically nothing. As you can see on the screen, it's known only be from a few from a few fossils, mainly two femurs, uh, the lower half of a jaw, and what looks to be the lower parts of the legs. But even then, that is. We have no, yeah. We, we, we have no like idea. Teeth, kind of. Almost looks like teeth. They almost look like teeth. That, but we but really so have, do fingers. This, so fingers. This is one of those ancestors that re we really don't know hardly anything about. Uh, they lived yeah. six point one to five point seven million years ago, and when they were found, they were nicknamed Millennium Man. Uh, there, there would have most likely been uh, bipeds. Uh, their diet was similar to the previous ancestor, bugs, nuts, plants, hard tubers on the ground that they could have found, you know, berries, stuff in the trees, whatever they could get their hands on, really. Um, just to note, all of these, most of these ancestors we're talking about would have looked very similar to chimpanzees. Aside from the fact that they walked upright a little bit. Yeah. They would have looked like it, modern uh, ground chimpanzees that exist in Africa today. Or as or as a good friend of mine would call them, ape-like creatures. Indeed. Very ape-like creatures. Uh, yeah. And if you look here... <laughs> you look... Oh, come on. If you look here, we have a... Somewhat of a painting of what they might have looked like. Again, we'll never know. They're, that painting is very fun. Now this painting... Eh. Wait, which painting are you looking at? Oh, that's Aurora. the sitting one. The sitting down painting. Yeah, uh, yeah, the one right next to Aurora. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about probably what they would have looked like. Again, take take it or leave it. We'll, we'll have no way of knowing and t unless we can recreate tissue from bones, which doubt. X. Massive X. They're so... Cause, let alone finding these absurdly small amount of, of bones that we have of Auror and Tuganensis. Just finding more and then getting any kind of DNA sample from it. Trying to replicate it would be impossible. Yeah, we, we have... What would be the point of doing it anyway? <laughs> there would be basically no point aside from, oh, I wonder what they looked like. That's it. Keck W, do it for fun kind of kind of stuff, I guess. And that's basically what we know about Aurora. And again, we're not experts. Uh, but... The next ancestor is very important indeed. Say hello to Artipithecus ramidus, or Artie, as they've been Artie. as they've been good named. old Artie. This was the first ancestor that we have confirmed that was biped most of the time. 
Uh, yeah. These were still arboreal creatures. They lived in trees most of the time. But at this time in Africa, the woodlands was were really starting to take over instead of the vast jungles that were that that had dominated East Africa for the longest time. So there was more of a need to be to be able to look out over your surroundings when you're increasingly more and more on the ground, although bipedalism did not develop on the ground. As was developed previously thought. Yes, it developed in the trees. Um, these creatures would have stood around probably three feet tall. Very, very, um, very small creatures. What is interesting about these, they were the first ancestors we know of that were confirmed to be monogamous. We Monogamous know, family pairs. They formed family pairs. We know this yeah. because we had taken a look. If you take a look at one's skull and you look at their canines, if you look at their canines and a chimpanzee's canines, their canines, they are vastly reduced from chimpanzees because chimpanzees yeah. develop their canines to fight over females. With the reduction in size, it tells us there's no more need to fight over females, which says that they form monogamous pairs. Um, there is a little side note here that is interesting. I don't know how much I believe it, but due to a development no. in their larynx, they be believe that they might have had a sort of proto-language. This would have been... I'm, I don't believe it myself. If they did have it, it would have been a slightly more complicated grunt, I believe. That's my thought. I don't think it would have been very... They, they, um, from what they're saying, it says it would have been on the same level as an infant. I'm not even sure that. Um, like, I get the idea that it would have been, um, because the main reason that we think that they even had language, as far as I'm aware, is due to the fact that they were having to have one of the, one of the people, or one of them, not one of the people, but one of their, uh, pack or whatever, on the ground during some of these times, looking for a nut or a berry that had fallen from the tree, which they were normally within. And they had to look out, see if something was coming, so they'd have to communicate with with each other to give that message. Yes. But if, it, if anything to, was coming, yes. Yeah. yeah, if something was coming, to process that as meaning is, is difficult. Wow. And um, I, I, I doubt it, but it's possible. It's very much possible. Um, personally, I think it's just a slightly more complicated kind of grunt that might have conveyed yeah. more. Uh, if you look at their skele skeleton here, for, for a human ancestor, it's a pretty complete skeleton, I'd say. It, it's better than a lot of what we have. Um, one of the reasons we know they're bipedal as well is that if you look at their pelvis, their pelvis is much wider than that of a chimpanzee. As I said earlier, yeah. Our when pelvis has to be wide because when we stand up, it supports all of our organs. Yeah. That are constantly coming down. If you compare this and compare this to a human's, it looks more like a human's than a chimpanzee's. Yeah. Its feet would have looked very much like a monkey's, though. And that could be... Yeah. That could be a sign of... The, that's probably a sign of their arboreal nature. It um, is. Because they had to grab onto the... Uh, oh. Trunks and such. Although they wouldn't have been as good 
at climbing trees at a, as a chimpanzee is. No. Uh, because if you look, why humans are so relatively shit at climbing, climbing trees, is you look at our pectoral mes muscles. Our pectoral yeah. muscles face forward. A chimpanzee's pectoral muscles faces upwards, which gives them more upper body strength to pull themselves up and around things. Yeah. We can assume this one's pectoral muscles probably still faced upwards, but it was more than likely, uh, more than likely shitter at climbing up. Yeah. Didn't need to get that much high up. I.e., um, this ancestor lived about 5.5 to about 4 million years ago. Yeah. Although this, the oldest ancestor is reclassified as an earlier ancestor of Romanus called Artipithecus Cadaba. Which no. it is much no. older. Cadaba, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you look here, we have an approximate recreation of what they might have looked like. Again, we have no idea, and we will never know what they looked like. No. Much, much like a monkey. Very much like a monkey. Oh, God. Uh, moving on. I know the, I know these earlier ones aren't that... We don't have much information on them at all, just because of how old the fossils are. How old they are in the fossil record. The older stuff is, the less you have of it. Yeah. Now, here we come to the most famous individual found across human ancestry. Say hello. To Lucy. Lucy. Australopith uh, Australopithecus afarensis. This was an ancestor that lived about 4 million to 3 million years ago. Um, this is the most complete fossil of an early human ancestor we have. And this was revolutionary when she was found. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, she is mostly intact. Uh, well, not mostly intact, but the most intact we've found. We have... Yeah. We have a femur. We have the lower leg bones. We have half a pelvis. We have all her ribs, pretty much. We have most of her spine, her arms, um, her jaw, and bits of... Uh, a lot of her skull. Uh, very much a few plates of her skull. Uh, her collarbone... It's quite a it's quite a bit in terms of paleontology finds. It's it, it's a lot. That is a lot. I'll admit. And funny enough, this her um her fossil is named after the song I was playing on the radio, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles, which I think is a great little caveat. Well, it's a great little factoid. A wonderful song. Wonderful song. Again, this would have been another very much ape-like creature, uh, but they were fully bipedal. This one was starting to look a bit more humanoid. Uh, we we know this because we found footprints, fossilized footprints yep. of Australopithecus afarensis in uh, Laetoli, Tanzania, I believe. Uh, called the Laetoli footprints that that show us their shape of their foot and it their feet looked very much like ours. Very, very much like ours. Um, there's even one uh, footprint that's heavier than the other, uh, which might suggest that they were carrying something more than likely an infant. Yeah, yeah. And the sheer amount of tracks indicates that they lived in 
large family groups. They traveled in packs, essentially, in tribal, in a tribal sort of sense, for lack of a better word. Yeah, they were, yeah. This was mainly for protect, protection, um, and these were pretty large for groups of animals, more than a dozen individuals in a pack. Uh, yeah. And what that affords you is is more protection, obviously. Because if you have a lion that comes up to your group, uh, what are you going to do? There's going to be, if there's 12 of you, you can all pick up a rock and chuck it at it. Uh, you would be surprised how the um, how much just throwing stuff at things can drive things off. There was a and, I believe I don't remember where, but I remember hearing a story about how the Spanish came to this island, this very very uh tribal little island, and the natives keep in mind the Spanish were in full plate metal armor, but the natives course. picked up rocks and just chuck chuck them at them consistently. Enough to drive them off. Well, like, even now, there are stories of uh, what the Sentinel Islands, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, the tribes there, it is still it what the government there calls. Uh, I forget who it's under, but the Sentinel Islands, I believe, they're under Britain, I think. But they're they're ruled as no one can visit them ever. But I remember seeing multiple, like, drone videos, or there was this guy from America, some Christian um, missionary was trying to convert them. He disappeared. But the, the drone footage, they were just throwing shit at it. And then it crashes down. That's and, great. But that this, speaking of throwing things, this one, the uh, Australopithecus afarensis, was thought to be the first to be able to throw things at a long range with pretty good accuracy and range. Yeah, you look at a chimpanzee try to throw things, it it shit. It has, but that's mostly because it has no form. Can't have a form. It no, no. Whenever you're bipedal all the time, you have a form to be able to throw things as far as you can, um, with relative accuracy, and throw it pretty hard. We know it's enough to drive off a lion. Um, yeah. It was very competent in its uh, bipedalism. We see that in its pelvis and its leg bones. It was very much nailed down um, bipedalism. Yeah, that hip, that hip bone that we have, very, very human looking. Um, of course, it had a tall face and a very pronounced brow ridge and a pronounced jaw, like most apes. Um, it was a generalist herbivore, you know, eating many um, no omnivore forest and savanna plants. These were the first ancestors, really, that you could call savanna apes at this point. Um, yeah. Uh, the African Rift Valley had all, had been formed for a little bit now. Um, obviously, what what caused this dryness was that mountains had sprung up in uh, East Africa that blocked uh, the forward coming winds, which blocked out a lot of the storms, which yeah. means things started to dry up. And not only that, when things started to dry up, another plant started moving in. This plant we know as grass. And it took over everything. It's weird to think, grass didn't exist 10 million years ago. No. It, it is a very odd thing to think about, because we see grass everywhere. Stuff well, didn't... Stuff didn't it exist. It might have existed, but it existed in a minor way, maybe. It was just able to take over this specific area. This area. It took over this entire area, replaced, the, replaced most of the trees besides the standard savanna trees that we see uh, today, even on the African 
uh, Savannah. And East Africa has never really, I'd say, recovered, but, like, changed from from this. It, it has no. been Savannah for a while. Probably so, will forever. So, what did happen is that these apes got a little bit bigger. Uh, the largest males were somewhere around four foot five, and the females were much shorter at about three foot five. Um, yeah. It is a they had very a very big sexual dimorphism in this case. Uh, well, why by why this happened? We have no idea. It should be stated that a lot of these ancestors, of course, they went on their own ways while another uh, branch splits off, which may or may not have survived. Uh, what we do know for certain is that they are all dead, except for us. <laughs> yeah. Unless we find them somewhere in the middle of an African jungle that... An ape that stands on two legs most of the time, I mean, but for the most part, we know they're pretty dead. We, we would have found more recent remains by now. Yeah. Like Bigfoot. If he existed, we would have found his shit. Yeah. Uh, here you can see an approximate model of what they might have looked like. Again, very much ape-like. Ape -like. Quite a bit. Very much ape-like. Very, uh, very human to it. Feet are very human. Hands are very human-like. Um, of course, would have had a gut like most apes do. Uh, it's just one of those things apes do is have those things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, let us move on to the next one in the family of Austro Australopithecus. Say hello to Australopol Australopithecus africanus. This little beauty lived about 3.3 to 2.1 million years ago. Uh, this fossil is nicknamed the Tong Child. Uh, it was found with about 90% of the skeleton intact, which is pretty good, I'd say. Um, that is pretty good. As you can see by its skull, it looked starting to look a bit more human. Uh, not much. It uh, looks very chimpanzee, too. It looks very chimpanzee, but very human. It's like you fuse the two together. Um, yes, yeah, very. The, what is good to note is that all of these species had very, very small brains compared to ours. Chimpanzee brain is about 300 cc's. Um, well, no. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Australopithecines, right around 400 cc's, not that much bigger from their chimpanzee's brothers. The, which does, um, which does That's their cut, skull specifically. Which does cut the theory that bipedalism means you're smarter. It doesn't. It just means you walk on two legs. What yeah. makes us unique is the ability to shape things. Well, to use things as tools. and I think, no. really... Remember, huh? remember, lots of, um, lots of animals use tools. No, no, no. I mean, it's our... our, uh, our uh, Consciousness, our self-awareness, that makes us smart. True, but tool, apes tool use twenty four seven tool use is not unique. Remember this. No, tool use is not at all not at all unique. What makes us unique is unique making other. our own tools. Yes, that is very true. But tool use itself not unique at all. Even a chimpanzee can use a rock to break open a nut. Yeah, they do that all the time. They they do it all the time. So it's not inaccurate to think that a Australopithecine would like take a stick and just hold on to it just for protection's sake. Yeah. 
Cough, cough, Jane Goodall. Of course, these would, these, their brains would be about 420 to about 510 cc's, really not that much bigger than chimps. Yeah. Um, again, it was omnivorous, fruits, leaves, tubers, whatever it could find, really. Um, m m very likely not to have venture ventured far from their place of birth. Uh, they would have moved around, obviously, like most animals, but not that far. Wouldn't be walking around much. And here we have an approximate painting of what they might have looked like. Again, like earlier, we have no idea, and we will never know. Um, I love this painting specifically. This painting makes him look like an orangutan that like grew up a little bit. Kind? I, it's well, an orange hue. If he was an orangutan, though, he'd have way longer arms. True. But these creatures actually did have very long arms for their size. Oh, they did? Really? Yeah. Okay. If you ever seen, like, how long a chimpanzee's arms? Basically, take, a, take a chimpanzee... Oh, really? Take a chimpanzee and make it walk on two legs and have its arms sway side to side. You'll see. That's this guy? Well, that's a, that's a lot of the earlier ancestors. That is true. That is very true. They did have, like, really long arms. Again, previously, we thought that Afarensis was our oldest ancestor we found till like, the 1990s, where we found Sahelanthropus. For some yeah. reason, a lot of scientists don't like to talk about Sahelanthropus. For some reason. Um, well... Again, we split off from chimps around 7 million years ago. Yes. Um, we split off from gorillas around 10 to 12 million years ago. Which is, I think, an interesting little caveat. Well, you forget, we are related to gorillas. And sometimes gorillas do seem quite uh, human-like. Sometimes. Gorillas. Yeah, well, sometimes. Sometimes. They're fun. Anyway, here's a little aside we have here. Say hello to Paranthropus boisei. This thing lived between 2.5 to 1.15 million years ago. Uh, he is not an ancestor of ours. He is actually split off from uh, Australopithecus. Australopithecus. Fuck me. Australopithecus no. afarensis. This this yeah, guy yeah. actually split off from him. Um, plant-based diet. And they had a very much plant-based diet. If you look at their skull, that little ridge in between, that is to help hold the muscles, the very powerful jaw muscles in place they needed to chew the sheer amount of plant matter they were eating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these things were pretty big. Uh, they would have looked like biped orangutans from what I've seen. Yeah. Um, they, giant jaws. Very powerful jaws, but they're mostly... Just looking at the skull, they have huge, massive. Yeah, very massive. This thing lived around the same time as our next ancestor we're going to get into. Um... Which is very funny. I'm going to talk to about that when I get to that. But I love these things because they're just like... We, we start finding ancestors that lived... These aren't ancestors. We started finding offshoots of ancestors that aren't related to us. That lived at the same time as our other ancestors that are related to us. It's very, yeah. it's very fun to find these things. Other human species that existed at the same time as the ones that would become us. It's fascinating things. Fascinating. Uh, if you look here at... This is an approximate model of what they might have looked like. Again, we have no idea. Um, that one, I, I believe that one the most somehow. This one looks very, very ape-like with... Somewhat of a human-like stare, kind of, but that's a lot of chimps and and uh, apes in general. 
Yeah. Uh, they would have looked more human than the previous ancestors, but still very much ape-like. Uh, very. Anyway, on to that. We have a very important ancestor, but for some reason, a lot of them, a lot of an uh, scientists don't like to talk about this one for some reason. Say hello to Homo habilis, <laughs> nicknamed Handyman. Um, Handyman? I didn't know he was nicknamed Handyman. Yeah, they were nicknamed the Handyman. He was extremely important because of what he started to do. The He lived around the same time as the previous ancestor, Paranthropus Boisei. Two point, he lived from 2.31 to 1.65 million years ago. Uh, they... Mostly scavenged on dead corpses, again. Uh, but, you know, they would have eaten plant matter, rotten roots, and nuts. Um, but the thing is... The first hominid to make tools. These... I was about to get to that. These scavengers <laughs> picked up bones that, of course, the meat was gone by the time they got to it most of the time. But what they found is that inside the bones... There's bone marrow, which is very shit. high in protein. Very good shit. But most of the time, you can't get to the bone marrow without having something to get into it. So what they did, they tried to find rocks that could get into it. And they might have tried it, and then the rock breaks. But then they noticed something. On this rock has a knife, has a knife edge. Which means I can cut into this bone to get into the bone marrow. Oh, that's neat. But wait. If I break this rock, it can give me that edge. Oh, I can make things now. See, these were the first ancestors to really make their own tools. To make them. They, they, they make made them. their own tools. They, but... We have to know what we're looking for when we're looking at excavation sites. Because sometimes yeah. they just look like rocks. Yeah. But we can see that marks are made on these rocks. Which tells us this was a tool. We can also tell that they cut... That they cut these bones. Because there are actual cut marks on the bones we found at their eating sites, or where they died. Their tribe yeah. sites. Uh, but like in, in, um, in, um, Arizona, we, uh, there's specifically read a whole book about, um, how they thought the, um, Adobe tribe, the cliff dwellers, how they believe that they might have, well, no, the, not the cliff dwellers, the fuck the Odom people. No, not them either. It was the cliff dwellers, I think. I forget which tribe. It was some tribe of Indians, native of early Americans, and they. Uh, it was about them eating eating bones, and they looked at different, like they looked at the bones and saw how, if they were broken open and that kind of shit, and they did similar stuff with these. With the bones like that. Mm -hmm. Fascinating shit. Yeah, this is all fascinating stuff. Uh, if you look here, we see um, Homo habilis just making his tool. Making a tool he's going to need to break open some bones or a carcass he might have found or whatever. Um, I adore this, this picture specifically because it's just... It looks like some old man just, like, if you put this face over some guy fishing, I'd accept it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if anybody does actually watch this thing, uh, send us a Photoshop of him just fishing. Just put a rod in his hand. <laughs> I'll accept it, and I'll, I'll rate it out of five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. 
<laughs> I'll probably rate it a five out of five. Uh, yeah, of course, he's just making his own tools. Uh, there is a sudden increase in meat-rich diets at this point in human history. We really started to narrow down on eating meat at this point. Um, again, it was scavenged. Uh, we weren't quite hunting anything yet. <laughs> we wouldn't for a while. Uh, here no. are some of the tools we've actually been able to find. Which are fascinating little things, because they're, they're, most of them are very small. Uh, these are called Oldowan tools. And not because they're old. Oldowan? Oldowan. Huh. Uh, you know, they're... Primary used to break open bones and eat bone marrow. Because. Um, I assume MS113 and MS109, those were to get into, like, femurs. Get the bone marrow uh, out of there. Some of these would have been scraper tools as well, yes. Um, yeah, that, that was. Of course, you see at the bottom right, that was a cutting tool, obviously. Yeah, bottom right, that's definitely. I assume you mean MS-120. Uh, I don't know, but these are just little fascinating caveats, because now we're starting to see tools being made. Caveat right, Dova. Huh? You're not using caveat right. Fuck you. It's not, you're not using it right. I'm trying, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how words work, thank you. Um, well, hey... My back is all fucked up, and your mind is all fucked up, so we make a whole person. Thank you, Captain Obvious. You're welcome. <laughs> um, obviously, eating meat is much, much better for um, energy efficient efficiency than plants. Yeah. Um, what this would do is it would, if you look at a... Chimpanzee, a lot of their, a lot of their in, a lot of their insides are dedicated to plant digestion, uh, because it takes much, much more energy to digest plants than it does for meat, because meat, yeah. meat's just easier, um, and with this increase in protein, and less energy used to process plants. We can use that excess energy to focus on a very important thing. Our brains. Be smart. Yes, we can be smart. Be smart. Very smart. I am smart. smart. Very smart. And that S gets us into our next ancestor. Say hello to Homo erectus. Nah. Nah. I know. Funny name. Literally just funny. means upright man. His upright. skull looked very much like ours. Um, he would have had pretty much ours. He would have had yeah. a. He lived between two million years ago to about a hundred thousand years ago, give or take. What's funny about this is that we have a a man much like ourselves living at the same time as Homo habilis, Paranthropus boisei, even still some Australopithecines running around. We had multiple human species running around at the same time who kind of looked like us, but kind of didn't. And this man, more than likely, was kind of aware of that fact. And that must have scared the shit out of him. Can't blame him. It's one of, at least my theories, why the Uncanny Valley exists. Because if you... No, that, that makes sense. Think about it. If you see something that looks human, but isn't quite human, that should scare the shit out of you. But also, the reason that the Uncanny Valley exists is specifically with art. I feel like. But I feel like there is an evolutional factor to this. There is absolutely, absolutely. 
probably was an evolutionary factor as to why we are uncomfortable with shit like that. Like, also why there's an evolutionary factor, why we are afraid of uh, spiders. Yes. Or the ocean. <laughs> um, this guy, he was very smart. Not quite us, but he was no. extremely smart for an ape. Ape man. Um, ape man. He Upright had, man. He had a CC of about 900 to 1100 CCs. That's because the meat that our ancestors were eating, very easy to digest, more energy spent on the brain. Uh, in a very, relatively very short period of time, probably only took about 500,000 years to uh, create Become this, this man. Yeah. Uh, we believe, we think it's very likely that he was mostly hairless like us. Um, and what that does, it gives you the ability to sweat and bring down your body temperature. With this, we were able to finally hunt and go on the offensive for the first time. We're no longer scavenging for whatever. We are actively hunting. We can do this. become the terrifying creature that we are. We can do this because our endurance is so good. We can we can hunt an animal into exhaustion, and when they collapse, finally kill them. We yep. basically drive them into heat exhaustion. It is kind yep. of cruel, but it's kind of awesome. It is awesome. That's one of my favorite uh, posts that I've seen on. Uh... On many websites, yes, is describing what it was probably like to be like a <laughs> uh, an antelope. Imagine you're being chased by this bipedal fucking monster, and he just won't stop. He won't stop. You're faster than him, but he just doesn't stop. He just keeps jogging at you. He just keeps jogging at you, and you're like, "Oh, I can outrun him." And he's like, "He's not trying to catch up." Not right He's now. He's just waiting for you to exhaust He's yourself. He's just trying to follow you. And your stupid little <laughs> brain doesn't tell you, wait, you're going to pass out. Yeah, you're going to pass out eventually. And then once you do, he's just going to take his spear and just fucking kill you. Of course, here we have a painting of Homo erectus. He would have looked a, a bit like us, uh, quite a bit. Because of the that hairless the things. Although the... he would have had a obviously pronounced jaw, a pronounced jawbone and a pronounced brow ridge. Yes. Obviously. Uh, we believe this is also around the time that the gene for dark skin uh, mutated because, well, you need protection from the sun once your hair is gone, right? Yeah. Uh... And what you'll notice... The first to produce clothing, too. Yeah, we believe... I think it's a... A good jump to think that something this smart would have probably produced clothing. Probably. I mean, some people... Some scientists don't believe it. But, personally, I believe it. They probably produce clothing. And as you can see in this uh, painting here, we believe they were the first to master fire. Yes. Um, and what fire does cooks your meat. It makes processing meat even easier because it's already broken and, down. Which means nutritious. you can really invest in your mind now. That's like per insane. Tree. Your mind is now doing anything you want. Anything you can put your mind to. I am uh, become God. Uh, over here we have uh, another uh, model of what they looked like. Again, very much like us they looked. Uh, Might have had a kind of more ape-like face, but like still very much starting to look like us. Yeah. Uh, again, jawline. Uh, bridge. Uh, that this picture, honestly, I'll be honest, <laughs> I don't like it. 
You don't like it. <laughs> I don't like that one. It, there's, it's, it's it very, gives me that. It gives me that. Like, that's not a man. That's not a guy. It looks like AI art. Uncanny Valley. Kinda. Well, there's honestly, a reason for that. <laughs> honestly, I'll be honest. That's not me. <laughs> that ain't me, dude. <laughs> also, very, very important to this species. They were the first to leave Africa. They traveled all over the world. Gasp? Yes, I know. It's insane. Previous species, either because... For whatever reasons, either they just didn't get in their heads to go somewhere else, or they never had the numbers to move anywhere. Uh, Homo erectus, we can assume, is pretty, pretty successful. Uh, yeah. Considering we find their their fossils all over the world, well, all over the eastern hemisphere, at least. All over the old world. All over the old world. Eight, uh, we have quite a few that ended up in Europe. Uh, of course, we find quite a few in Africa as well. Quite a, we have quite a bit in um, in modern modern day Israel. Um, of course, we have. Unsurprising. Um, East Some Asia people. is a place we find a lot in. Siberia, we find a lot in. Um. If you look at the map here, it'll tell you everywhere we've pretty much found quite a few of them. On the island of Flores in Indonesia, we found um, a pygmy man. We we have cons we have confirmed it is a descendant of Homo erectus. He was only three feet tall, but would have looked quite a bit like us, um, except for the fact that he looked like a fucking hobbit. Um, <laughs> Yeah. We found some in the Philippines. We found quite a bit in Australia. We, we, with that, we can assume they probably built some sort of primitive boats. Because how else are they going to get there, right? Yeah, I don't know how they got to Africa. Which is also kind of funny because... Got to Africa. Got to Australia. God, I'm, go. <laughs> I'm a dent. I'm a dent, dude. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, you're right. But no. No, but dude, it's like because if they got to Australia, how do how are they getting because the model is the way we think early humans got to America and thus to be Native Americans and to be the the um Olmecs and the Aztecs and all them. We think the theory was, I don't know if we've changed that theory now. Theory was then, oh, it was because of the land bridge. We still, I'll get into that when we get to that. But um, the theory still is predominant on the land bridge. Although there's a few changes to that. Um, okay. But yeah, we're fairly certain they could probably build boats. And I don't know why a lot of scientists do this, but some of them think uh, they couldn't even make their own clothes, which I think is ridiculous. They're making spears. They're making fucking clothes, you know? At least... Well, clothes... Or just... Clothes or, at least, or at least wearing skins, you know? Wearing skin? Yeah, wear, wearing skins, you know, of animals they've hunted. Oh, wearing... <laughs> The way you said it, you just said wearing skin. So I thought you meant, like, doing a uh, leather face? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, no, but imagine, though. Like, Matt, get, go, go back in time with me. Imagine. Are we going on a trip? We're going on a trip. In our favorite rocket ship? Flying through the sky? Little Einsteins? God damn it. <laughs> I fucking song, bud. Oh, great. But, uh, yes. Uh, they've been found all over Asia, so that's how we know they migrated. Um, yeah. As you can see on the map, they were fucking everywhere. Multiple waves of migrations, by the way, we believe. 
not only did some of them go out, go they out into the other world, they also like came back on several occasions to Africa. Yeah. We have multiple waves of leavings and coming back, and it, it's just, it, it's, it's wonderful stuff. I love it. Yeah. But most uh, significantly in the Denisovan Caves in the middle of Siberia. Uh, Where we found a Neanderthal and a Denisova remain. Also, I believe we found Homo sapien remains in there, too. I think we did. And we're pretty sure that they... Let's get it on. Also, we're fairly certain these are the first humans to use language as we would understand it. Now, yeah, it would yeah. it would have been primitive by our standards, but yeah, it was would have been a recognizable kind of language. It would have complicated, not super complex ideas, but more complex, like, go over there and hide. You know? Maybe I bet. Some, something like that. I bet they did. Nothing like, know. oh, what do you think about life and death? Probably nothing like that. Nothing like that, no. They weren't shitposting yet. We weren't in Rome yet. No, we weren't shitposting. You can talk about Rome when we get there. That's my fa- I love Rome. Uh, well, you're gonna have to pick a topic that you want to talk about specifically, so, you know. There's so much I want to talk about. Um, our next... We spent a lot, a good amount of time on that one. Well, they are very important. They are. They're pretty uh, big. The next one we're talking about is called Homo Heidelbergensis. Uh, personally, I don't know a lot. I know we have more on them, but from from what I know... They lived around 875 to around 400,000 years ago. Uh, they are the last common ancestor between Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. Um, in a way, they would have looked... Of course, they looked like us. Because, you know... They're fucking humans, basically, at this point. Yeah. Um, they were smarter than... Homo erectus, probably around 1100, 1200 cc. Well, maybe not 1200, but 1100 cc's. Um, very pronounced jaw ridge and a heavy brow ridge. Um, we believe these were the first, the first real humans to make some simple art. Maybe symbols, very basic though. Extremely. They were probably basic. the, yeah, not probably the, them. Not the uh, caves. caves. Not the caves in... Not the caves. No. They did not paint what the caves. Humans painted those caves. No, but we painted the caves. What did they do? They would have had very basic um, outlines of animals. Nothing detailed like we find in the caves. Oh. So we don't um, even have that. Um, we don't have a... We, we, we also believe they were the first to kind of bury their dead. They um, they respected Jeebus. Because we found sites with their remains there. Yeah. Um, with multiple remains, and the sheer, amount, the sheer amount there tells us that this was probably a graveyard of some sort. Or at least a massive mass grave, you know? Yeah. Um, so this was the last common ancestor between us between us and Homo neanderthalensis. Um, they, they used to think it was just that and Homo erectus, but now we're fairly certain this was, this guy was hanging around. Uh, it's very interesting uh, guy. He's a, he's a great guy. Yes, he's a great guy. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this picture that you have... Oh, let me show it to the... Yep, the model, yep. That model, I'm 95 to 100 percent sure that's the just the one from if you saw it, the classic hit film, Night or no, Night at the Museum. Yes, it's that. I'm pretty sure it's that guy. 
Yeah, but those were supposed to be Neanderthals, just like him. though. They were, but it's it looks just like him. You you can't tell me that's not him. <laughs> yeah, these are great great guys, great guys, great guys. Shut up, wonderful guys. Um and um not quite last, but like pretty much last we have. Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. That is their official name because they are considered another species of Homo sapiens. Uh, everybody loves to talk about Neanderthals. Mostly because these are probably the Homo, probably the ancestors, not, they're not ancestors. The relative we know the most about because we found yeah. their skeletons complete pretty much um, we do have full yeah they lived approximately between 315,000 to 40,000 years ago that's very recent in terms of evolutionary period uh yeah they they would have been shorter but they would have been very stocky very strong these things hunt were pre fairly certain these things hunted woolly rhinos so yeah they, they were very strong. They made very complicated, well, not very complicated, but pretty complicated tools from what we found. They were even, yeah. they even had bigger brains than us. Of yeah, around they, 1350 to 1400 cc's. The average human is about 1250 to 1300 cc's. Yeah. That doesn't mean they were smarter than us, but they might have been. We don't know. Uh, we believe they had a kind of culture um, from what we've been able to find around their campsites and whatnot. Most likely, we know they made symbols. Um, there was a cave where we found a hashtag in it. And yes, the official science called it a hashtag, which I hate. Wait, hold on. What do you mean a hashtag? Like it looked like a hashtag. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Based? Were they playing tic-tac-toe? Tic symbols in them. Uh, what is most notable about them is that any person who has any kind of European heritage is most likely going to have a good chunk of Neanderthal DNA. Well, they have some, yeah. Uh, it's actually very, very likely... Um, a lot of you have some sort of Neanderthal DNA in you because we very heavily interbred with them. Um, yeah. You we see, did it a lot. You see, humans evolved in Africa from Heidelbergensis that was all over, but we're fairly certain the first humans came from Africa, though there is some speculation on that. Um, and what they did, they immediately started moving into the Levantine area near modern Israel. Again, that's where that we believe they first encountered Homo Neanderthals. And almost immediately we were like, ooh, new species must breed. Like filthy yes. fucking humans we are. Right? Well, um, yeah. It's, well, we all did it in, in, uh, in Siberia. Yeah. We, we evolved... Around 400,000 years ago, 300,000. Some even as late as 100,000 say, but I don't believe that. Uh, 100,000, really? Some scientists say 100,000. I say That's more, like, more like 400,000. And like anatomically correct humans around 100,000 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, we... we or the dominant species, and we're great. Uh, here is a Neanderthal skull. You can see they had a very, pretty large brain. Um, I know you can't see comparison, but that is larger than a human skull, guaranteed. You that can, is, yeah. You can tell because it's a little more elongated at the back. Yeah. Um, I guarantee you, if you saw a Neanderthal, I'll switch to that model there. If you saw him, you would you would have just assumed this was like 
a kind of short uh, Northman of some sort. That picture is so, so good. He would have looked like some sort of a short, very strong, like kind of primitive looking guy. Well, they were primitive, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but you would have never really guessed that he was a completely different kind of species, now would you? No. Of course, the only dead giveaways would be their pronounced uh, brow ridge and their their massive bigger nose. no their massive noses, which were used to um, suck in air and and uh, heat it up before it going into the lungs. Yes, which I think and is. I've heard, I've heard back in the day. I thought there was a theory that's why they went extinct because once it heated up. It, it was fucking useless then. I bet that's a dead theory. I bet it is. What we think happened... It's very, like, 1990s-ass science. What the ones that didn't work. What we're fairly certain happened is that... We found that Neanderthals didn't like to live in very large groups. Uh, mm. They would have lived in small family groups about... I think the most they ever found was like 12 individuals at a time. Very isolated? Yeah, very isolated. Mm -hmm. um, there might have been a lot of inbreeding. Uh, yeah. Or they might have just been like bred out of existence because of the sheer amount of Homo sapiens. I think that's what I think that's partially it. I think that's more likely than the warfare bit, although the warfare bit, you know, pro maybe. Uh, we are we are a, a warlike warlike bunch. I, I I should mention that we are since even though we are very warlike, almost all these species would have had some sort of tribal competition. Don't think that. Well, yeah. Don't think that because we're because we are so evolved that we wouldn't have had like wars back in our old. Stages even chimpanzees have wars, like Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall documented a very good war. I think it was called the uh, Gombe Chimpanzee War. The Gombe Chimpanzee War. If you ever get a chance, look it up. It's a it's awful. It's awful, but it really goes to show you how long we've been at war with ourselves, pretty much. Uh, don't think that because these are primitive creatures that they're just peaceful uh, things. No, chimps are very vicious, and humans have probably always been very vicious. Um, we we kind of we kind of really put a copyright symbol on being being vicious. Yeah, like really. Yeah. Uh, let me think. What else was there? Um, again we. Interbred with them a lot. Um, what 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 they we found, interbred with what, ourselves? Yes, we always interbreed with ourselves. But what they've actually <laughs> found is that the, <laughs> they've dated a Neanderthal settlement, and then they took another settlement that was a Homo sapiens settlement around the same time. The Neanderthal mm -hmm. settlement had about twelve to fifteen. Uh, 12 to 15 individuals. The Homo sapiens ones had about 150 individuals. Yeah. We are we, much better at, we are at working together with each other than previous human species are than what Neanderthals were. Because Neanderthals, apparent from what it looks like, they didn't work together, like, a lot. A whole, whole lot. Outside of their very close family groups, it seems. I wonder if they competed for women. That's unlikely. Um, cons though we'll never really know. Of course, there will be uh, exceptions to the rule in every species, right? In every group, there's exceptions to the rule. But Well, no, I mean like, you know? I mean, it, it, it's possible. Um, it's possible. 
But yeah, basically, um, Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago. Um, we've been the dominant species on the planet ever since. One, yeah. of the, one of the most fascinating inventions that humans created in the early days that was really something. Something called an atlatl. Oh, the atlatl. It was basically a spear thrower. It yeah, would launch thing. a spear double the range of what you would normally do. It is brilliant and it is a beautiful comp co complicated for a species weapon. It is yeah. brilliant. We were able to really like hunt a down a lot. Cylindrical little thing that would grip onto a spear and then you just fucking huck it and it throws it really far. Mm -hmm. That laddles. Yeah. It's it's great. Cool word too. Wonderful word. Um, what you were saying about the Bering Land Bridge. Okay, yeah, yeah. 10,000 years ago, we all know the Earth was in an ice age. Which means a lot of the places that weren't solid are now solid, right? Um, well, yes. Now, the Bering Land Bridge theory is still viable. Mm -hmm. What we think now, though, what happened was that it was just a few family groups that just tra you know, follow their prey over into America. What we used to think is that was a massive migration. No, no, no. No, I... Huh? No, this would, would have been as small as maybe ten family groups. I didn't think it was, like, a mass migration. I thought it was, like, a very small amount of people. Yeah, I'm just saying that's what they think now, is that it was a very small amount of people. Uh, they the most thought it was huge. Uh, they used to think it was pretty big. I didn't think it was. They or said, I remember they said it was huge. I was like, I don't think it was fucking big. Because we didn't fucking know it was across that bridge. Yeah, but we, well, we know one thing was across that bridge. Food. Food. But... You can't risk a whole lot of shit for food. If you know food is on the other side, too. There could also be more predators. Could be worse shit. Yeah. Well, all that being said, we've reached... You could have a Donner party. You know? <laughs> With all that being said, I believe we finally reached modern humans, which means I think we're good on this particular subject. Me, re. Yes, you, re. Um, basically, now we can do quite a bit more research on our next topics. Uh, don't know what we're going to try first. Uh, my, uh, it's going to be random. We're not going in order or anything. We're just gonna, I just thought this would be a good place to start. With how humans even got to this point. Yeah. So, uh... Um, sure start. Yeah. Thank you for listening. I'm, uh... Professor Doba. This is my assistant, Sieg. And we'll be signing off for now. Uh, see ya. Sieg? Bye bye